Our next speaker is Borja Nordesgaard. He's joining us from Copenhagen, and uh, he's been a great friend to the FH Foundation over the years, helping to organize this meeting on several occasions. Just reading his bio, I think he's been amazingly prolific in, in several ways. He's uh, an understated Dane, but is, uh, he's been uh, published over 100 papers that have been cited over 100 times, so he's very influential. And he's also disseminating his knowledge. He's trained over 75 uh, students or, or postdocs, and so I'm sure they're spreading the gospel over the years, and we're looking forward to your, your talk about something that I know is very important to him. We, we use the term fake news nowadays a lot, and he's going to be talking about some of the fake news about statins, I think. That's right. Uh, thank you very much for introduction and for invitation to come here. And uh, I'm very honored to speak here again at this uh, meeting. It's a wonderful meeting. Um, uh, as I try to show on this slide, I have a huge conflict of interest. It's shown below. It's called the Danish taxpayer. It's a, I come from a socialistic country. That's what many Americans call it. It's a, Fox News call it a communistic country. And they, <laughs> these days, they say it's almost like Venezuela. I mean, that's the way it is. Uh, but so that is my conflict. It's a, it's a country where we collect the most taxes. Uh, so everybody pays taxes, but everybody get a lot of money back from the society. So. For my personal, they paid my education, all my wages, and all my research. So what I say generally is what is the interest of the common person living in Denmark, and that means in the entire world. Um, so the topic I was given is shown here. Um, so certainly, read this. In my world, I think once upon a time, um, we all believed, or you believe maybe in evidence-based medicine, uh, Statins were shown to reduce heart attack, stroke, and early death. And really, there's nothing that has ever been shown more convincingly in the history of medicine for preventing disease in adults. That's it. It's so well shown. Patients rarely experience any side effects from statins. The first many years when I saw patients, nobody complained about side effects because there isn't any. Well, there is double blind. One in a thousand have statin-related muscle symptoms. That's well known. It's one in a thousand. That's pretty rare. So usually when I meet doctors and they complain about side effects of statins, I ask them, tell me any medication in the history of medicine that have fewer side effects, double blind, and nobody has ever told me anything. It doesn't exist. There's nothing. Uh, anyway, and then uh, suddenly, it must have happened in your country. It happened in mine anyway. Suddenly a TV program reports negative news about statins. Many stop taking their statins. Doctors' consultations completely fill up with discussions about good and bad about statins. Frustrating, I think so. Certainly for doctors. And then, well, even you, down, down there, and you down there, and you, and you, even you, not me, I mean, I know the evidence, but you. <laughs> uh, even you start thinking, maybe statins do have side effects. So. Well, indeed, I think my muscles ate a little bit. So I've had colleague professors in medicine, they come and complain about egg in one arm because they got a statin or something that has nothing to do with statins, but they still think this is statins. Um, just, I get these pains just like on TV. Uh, perhaps uh, you can't trust the medical literature. That's what you start thinking. Uh, and in the end, I stopped taking my statin. I mean, that's what happens. Anyway, so here's a couple of publications that, uh, that sort of like addresses what happens if you stop taking your statin. So our own study up front, uh, negative statin with a new story is decreased statin persistence and increased myocardial infarction and cardiovascular mortality. That's from Denmark and we published it in 2016. But as this is in the US, I prefer to show some local data, some from the US, then people sort of like believe it more. So, it's a, so there's a couple of papers here from the US published in 2017, uh, one in Annals of Internal Medicine and one in JAK. So here's the first one, Serpent published in JAG in 2017. It shows uh, on the, on the y-axis the coronary heart disease event um, and on the x-axis years of follow-up. And, and this was uh, 105,000 medical care beneficiaries with myocardial infarctions. And then the researchers, they looked at the 2% that really said they had statin intolerance and didn't take the statins and compared them with the 53% that took statins the most. And here what you can see, so like in these observational studies, the ones that stopped taking the statins, they had much more coronary heart disease. And if you're interested, so like in the, 
in these uh, hazard ratios. That means coronary heart disease was 51% higher in those that stopped taking the statin compared to those with high prevalence and myocardial infarction 50% and death was similar. Here's the other study from the US. This is from uh, Boston, uh, Brigham and Women's uh, and Mass General Hospital. And, uh, and here, again, cumulative incidence of all-cause mortality on the y-axis and, and time. Um, and then they looked at it were all patients that had some sort of adverse events and something they, had, they said they didn't feel it well. And then some of them were continued on statin prescription that doctors said keep taking it and some stopped taking it. And here's the difference in who died and who lived on. And if you're interested in hazard ratios, there was 9% higher risk of cardiovascular disease and 27% higher risk of death of those that stopped taking their statin. So in our own study, we had this fortune because in Denmark, uh, we are completely registered. We have this number that everybody has. And, and then so we can follow everybody with 100% complete follow-up. Nobody is lost. Um, so uh, together with this uh, uh, guy, Sune Nielsen, um, he made the studies. We actually, he did all the work and I just give the talk. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so we followed the entire Danish population for statin use. And, and from 1995 until uh, 2010, and so we used these registers that are complete. And, and, and every single person, you can see uh, some move in, some moved out, some are born, some are dead. We know exactly what happened to them. So here's 5.2 million, here's 5.5 million, and then we can follow them uh, who who has actually continued use of statins, you can follow their single prescription and the one that keep taking statins. And then there's a number of people that only take one prescription and they don't take any more. And so we can compare those that take one prescription and stop taking it with the rest. And here's really what happened when you compare these two. So uh, shown in red, early statin discontinuation. In blue, those that continue taking their statin. And this is for myocardial infarction. And you can certainly see many more of those that stop taking their statin, they get myocardial infarction, 26% higher risk. And it's hugely significant because we just look at everybody in Denmark. When you look at this other endpoint, death from cardiovascular disease, it's again the same colors. Uh, you can see there's difference between the two curves. So um, if you're interested in those that uh, continue taking statin use after 10 and a half years, 9.5% uh, died of cardiovascular disease, whereas those that stopped taking statin was 10.4. This is 18% higher. So why is it then? I was asked to write this little piece for European Heart Journal this year. Why do the media report negative news about statin? Try to understand why media report that. I mean, why do we get all these stories? Well, uh, on the age scale here from 1960, that's around when I was born until today, um, when I grew up, I think, I'm sure that many of you grew up, uh, the reporting of journalists in various media was very sound, but there was also very little competition. There was very few media around there. So I think the media, the journalists, thought they should educate people. They should help make society better. So it was really ethically sound and balanced reporting. There was always a lot of background research. Specialists were used as sources. Uh, and the story was accurate. And then we saw this competition of more and more media outlets. And now today, the media is completely different. So what happens today now, there's fierce competition among the different media. And, and I think many of the media, they think you should entertain people rather than educate them. So uh, what they are being judged on is how many people do they reach? Uh, do they make money? I mean, that's the bottom line. There's really minimal background research there, so they have to produce stories all the time. And then uh, anybody can be used as a news source. It doesn't need to be a professor from anybody. If you have something to say, you are a news source. So news and fake news are completely mixed. And that's the story today, which makes it very different. So just to illustrate you here, this is a, the most famous one in the UK, the Daily Express. They, they put these things up. and they. They have, so I just Googled it and just found some of their highlights. And you can see, I mean, one day they write, statins age you faster. But they can't write that every day. So some other day they say, statins key to living longer. It's a, and, and, uh, and here's a new row of statins uh, safety. 
And here is di statins raise diabetes risk, so that's two negative ones. But here are two positive ones, statins halts Alzheimer, how statins beat cancer. So, it's a, so you have to realize this. This is what happened. The media makes money reporting on statins. That's the way it is. It's not going to go away. They make money. So I just, uh, when I made this talk, I just made this simple Google search, uh, searching statins and side effects, statins and negative effects. And when you search statins side effects, you get, well, it's quite a lot, 16 million hits. When you compare that with statins positive effects, I only got about seven, eight million hits. Just a simple Google search. And that's what your patients are doing. And that's what each of you are doing, Google searches. There are many, many, many more hits on side effects because somebody makes money writing about it. So the negative news, do they actually affect whether you keep taking your statin or not? And there's a number of publications that, that have addressed this. And, uh, and just shown here, one from France, Australia, Turkey, and we had this one, Nielsen and I, from Denmark, and the UK had a very big one in the BMJ, and there's another one here from Denmark. So I'll just show you some of the data from these two. Importantly, there's another study here from uh, the UK Picker Institute of Europe. Uh, they say something about perception of statins in 2015. What, what do patients perceive? What do they? Well, it's really the relationship with DP that influences how they perceive it. It's a, it's concern about side effects, it's fear of cardiovascular disease, and then attitude in general to healthcare and medications. Do I want to take a pill or do I not want to take a pill? And then for DPs and cardiologists, they also serve it. What, what influences DPs and cardiologists? Well, it's the type of patient population they have that's important. Is it cardiologists, primary care? What's the role of DP in prevention? What are their views on guidelines and targets? Many GPs, they think all the guidelines are crap. You know, they, uh, I make my own guideline. You know, I just read the literature myself and read the news or something. Uh, and then knowledge about statins. So here's the UK paper published in the British Medical Journal. And on the x-axis is, uh, is the timeline. And then they illustrate that uh, at one stage here in 2014, there was a huge negative news, one of these in the Daily uh, Mail. And then here's the percentage on the y-axis of patients that top taking their statins for primary prevention on the top and secondary prevention in the bottom. And then you can see after this surge of negative news all over the country, suddenly 15% more patients stop taking statins in primary prevention and 18% more in secondary prevention. Half a year later, it was over again. And here's our data from Denmark. So we looked at all of, uh, or Sune Nielsen looked at all in Denmark. And on the x-axis is the scale from 1995 to 2010. And, and on the top, you can see the fraction of individuals more than 40 years actually being on a statin. So in the beginning, it was less than 1%. Here in 2010, it's 11%. And now it's even more. Uh, so that means there's many more patients. And then you can see on the middle part in red, the fraction of early statin discontinuation. That's how many only took one prescription. And that has increased to now 18%. Uh, and of course, it's even more now. So one in five take only one prescription of statins and stop doing it on a national level. And then I convinced Sune to read through all the media in Denmark, uh, radio, TV, everything. So he did that. It took him half a year. And then uh, he, every single one of these, he graded them uh, when there was something with statin or cholesterol. Was it a positive news? Was it a neutral news? Or was it a negative news? Said there's something bad about statin. And here you can see how many there is. So certainly, there's a lot of negative news, but there's actually more positive news about statins. So positive news and statins are also important. And then um, he, for each individual story, graded it very, it covered a small part of the country with so many readers, or it was national news with so many readers. So he was very specific about how do we influence people in this little country, Denmark. Every single person was graded how much they were influenced by positive and negative news. And so here are the results. Um, just shown here for news. So what is shown here on the x-axis is what's the odds ratio for stopping statins, only taking one prescription. And what was very surprising to me uh, was, of course, not that when there's a negative news, there's 9% increased risk that you will stop your statin. And if it's neutral, there's no influence. But the positive news, they have the opposite. So the positive news makes sure that people do not stop their statins. So it's not all bad. So the positive news are fantastic. And then for some of the other ones, of course, what was best for telling people that they kept on statin was that they already had cardiovascular disease. And what was most for them stopping was actually they were non-Danish descent, you know, people that come from other countries. 
America maybe or somewhere, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I made a lot of news on this news story. I, I made it out of you know, worldwide news and things. And then uh, immediately the mail, uh, they, the day after, this is uh, uh, the same sort of thing in, in the UK, like the one I showed you before, they, they wrote about me, ignores that in scary stories, said expert paid by drug on top professor, that's me, under fire for pushing benefits for the drugs while pocketing thousands. And it was com completely made up, fake news. It was just completely wrong. It, but they just said it to try because they were the ones that put out most of the negative news. So they wanted to hit me. But then there was a few other that said the opposite. So here, like Daily Mail, so MedPace there, even the New York Times was very negative news, may also stats and use behavior. So there's news all over the place. Um, last year in The Lancet, um, this uh, paper uh, from uh, the Alcott LLA study had a very interesting publication showing that what was in the blighted randomized phase side effects. And then had different versions. What here was really what came out. So in the double blind from this statin trial versus placebo, there was nothing for Moscow because it's on 1.0. So the only thing that was significant in that study for side effect was that you sleep better when you take a statin. And I, I take a set and I sleep fantastic. I mean, uh, and then, and then, then later, later they looked at the unblinded face, the same people, and asked them the same questions. And then suddenly, muscle symptom was a big problem in the unblinded face. So it's the same people that up here said there was no problem when it was blinded, but it was unblinded. It was suddenly a problem. So just a simple case story. This is me here sitting in the car. So. I was invited to this, this little country. Do you know what it is called? Kyrgyzstan. It's the most beautiful country in the world. It's so fantastic. And then they were so hospitable. And they, so I, I went to this cardiology congress. I gave a talk. And then the, a whole day they said, let me sh let us, we'll show you something of the country. And, they, and then these two cardiologists, they, they took me in a car and they drove me around. This and and, and, and in, in this country, there's only two languages. They speak Kyrgyz and Russian because it's a former Russian Republic, it's next to China here. It's pretty far away from this little part of the world called Europe. So it's uh, in the middle of Asia. And, and so uh, we sit there all day riding. And, and of course, you have to talk about different things. You can't just look at the mountains all the time, even though it's so beautiful. So, uh, so this guy here, the young cardiologist, he spoke English. This one, he's the older one. He, he didn't speak any English at all. So, so then he suddenly says, and we sit there and say, do you believe in statin intolerance? I've never seen any, you know, said. so he just wanted to know what was my opinion on this. He heard about from, I mean, the rest of the world, some they talk about them. He had never experienced anybody. So then I said, well, well, they talk a lot about it in my country. And then I, I said, well, what about you? And he, so this guy had to, he had to translate into Kirkis what was the senior cardiologist, what, what was he thinking? He was about 50 years old, so this is, of course, not the right picture. And then he said, well, I've actually seen, so he was counting on the front seat. He was counting one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so he remembered five patients with statin intolerance, and then he'd seen about 5,000 patients. So that's one in 1,000. That's exactly the number we see in the double blind trials. So my last slide, the summary. Well, statin discontinuation, that makes those that do that have more cardiovascular disease and they die more. Negative news make people stop taking their statins, but positive news have the opposite effect. It makes more people stay on statins. Uh, the perspective, of course, is that the media makes money reporting on statins. The media will not go away. I can tell you that for sure. So you have to live with it. Uh, so you have to discuss news and fake news with your patients. And I think that's what I do personally. Why not all of us? And that's why I give the talk here. Catherine F.H. Foundation, you have to use the media. So each of us should do, whenever there's a chance of having a positive story about statins, make the media report about it. They love it because they make money reporting it, even if it's positive. So when you have a chance, have a journalist write about positive things about a statin. Thank you very much for your attention.